Welcome to the Profitable Nutritionist Podcast, where your host and fellow nutritional therapy practitioner, Andrea Nordling, teaches you how to grow a sustainable, impactful, and consistently profitable health and wellness practice by following her proven formula. Welcome back to the Profitable Nutritionist Podcast, my friend. What a great episode today. Well, because of the content <laughs> that I'm going to be sharing with you, but also because I just realized this is episode 127. And for some reason, that is really impressing me right now. I'm thinking 127 episodes, 127 times I have pushed record and brought you valuable content into your ears over the last two and a half years. I'm kind of amazed by that. I know there's so many hundreds more episodes coming your way, but just a little reminder that we just got to start at the beginning. <laughs> Be willing to do one, two, five, ten, and when you do that and you build the consistency, suddenly you wake up and you're recording episode 127. <laughs> just so proud of that. So cool. Okay. So today I want to tell you what I know about successful holistic nutritionists and health coaches and wellness professionals versus unsuccessful ones. I think the big question is why are some wellness professionals, and I, I just use that like is so broad because I work specifically with nutritional therapists, holistic nutritionists, health coaches, but that covers a wide range of modalities, really. I have sleep coaches I work with. I work with naturopaths and herbalists and chiropractors. And as we know, in the sphere of health and wellness, people have various certifications and specialties, and it's it's kind of a fluid definition. So when I'm talking about highly successful holistic nutritionists or health coaches or whatever word I use, you could apply that to any modality. Don't think that I'm not talking about you. I'm 100% talking about you. <laughs> and I have coached thousands of people in this industry over the last four and a half years. So I have the answer to the question, why are some successful in starting their own business and why are some not successful? I am going to break that down. I'm going to tell you all about what I have seen over and over and over again. And it's probably not what you think. This episode is going to be where I break down who W-H-O, who the successful nutritionist or health coach is, and then dispel the myth for you that that person has certain skills because they don't. <laughs> they have traits, they have personality traits, and they have a certain way that they show up in their business, which is what this episode is all about, but they don't necessarily have common skills. Those skills for running the business, for marketing, for selling, for delivering really amazing results to their clients, for structuring their business on the back end so that it is efficient and it is scalable. All of those are skills. And that is what they learn in the Profitable Nutritionist program and then eventually in the mastermind. So I'm going to tell you right now that it is a myth that you have to have those skills or know those things to be successful in this field. It is not. Those are skills that you learn. If you don't know them yet, it's just because you haven't learned them. Easy peasy. I can teach you. Okay. It's the best news ever. Marketing, having compelling messaging that connects with your ideal clients, knowing how to structure project management through software, through automations, making your business more efficient, your time management as an entrepreneur. So huge. How do you juggle clients and fulfilling to your clients while also marketing so that your pipeline doesn't run dry? That's a skill. If you don't know how to do that right now, it's just because you haven't learned the process. Okay. That's a skill that you can learn. Running a high converting consult call. If you don't know how to do that right now, if you go to discovery calls with your people and you feel tongue tied and you feel super nervous about talking about money with them or bringing up the investment, you kind of hurry that part and get off the call as soon as possible, a sweaty mess. It's just because you don't have that skill yet. It's not because you're not good at business. It's just because you haven't learned how. If you don't have a website that you're proud of that is converting to leads on autopilot 24 hours a day, every day, if you're not growing your email list and nurturing those leads and warming them up and they're consistently reaching out to work with you, it's just because you don't have that skill yet, okay? If you don't know how to price your offer, if you don't know how to structure your offer so that it's irresistible to your people, it's just because you don't have the skill, right? Right? All of these things, these are skills. Skills are different than traits. And I'm telling you, it's traits that are going to make the difference between successful 
and not successful as a business owner. So if you're hearing this list right now of me talking about all of the skills and you're thinking, I don't have those skills, <laughs> I don't know how to do this, then you have to join me inside the Profitable Nutritionist Program. That's the only solution to this problem is join TPN. The doors are open right now. If you're listening to this in real time, you can join at theprofitablenutritionist.com slash join. They will be open for this quarterly enrollment until March 6th at midnight. If you are listening to this episode in the future, and you very well might be, then you're going to go to that same page, theprofitablenutritionist.com slash join, and you will see the dates of the next enrollment so you can get on the wait list and you can put that date in your calendar. There is a very, very well-oiled process that you learn inside the program for mastering all of these skills that I have talked about. There are also some extra resources. We're going to call these the soft skills, the traits of highly successful health coaches and holistic nutritionists that we're going to dig into in detail right now. And these are also covered in the program. So I don't want you to think that we don't talk about these nuanced traits of successful versus not successful because we do. This is actually a huge component of the program. And a lot of the mindset and coaching tools that I teach in the program support becoming more of all of this, <laughs> becoming more of what we're going to talk about right now. So if you're also going to listen to this episode and think, Ugh, I'm not sure how resourceful I am. I'm not sure how good I am at taking myself out of overwhelm or confusion, which are two of the things that we're going to talk about. That's okay. Because there's also a process for that, that you learn in the program. And then you teach your clients those same processes so that they can take themselves out of a place of overwhelm and confusion and become highly successful in their health journey as well. It's very, very meta. Okay. Deep breath. Let's dive in and talk about exactly what it looks like to be a highly successful wellness practitioner. Right now, this is what I'm seeing. And like I said, this is based on many years and many thousands of people. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't just come up with this out of nowhere. It's pretty tried and true by this point. But this is what it looks like. It's basically, if I had to sum up all five of these traits, it's a willingness to be coached and to coach yourself and to question what you believe <laughs> and wonder if that, is that true? Huh? I wonder if it is. Maybe, maybe not. That's what I mean by coaching yourself and making decisions, then taking imperfect action on those decisions and evaluating them along the way. Like truly, it's just showing up, curious, coachable, being resourceful, being willing to let it be messy in the beginning so that you can build your dream business and have the lifestyle that comes from it. That's it. Those are some of the traits that we're going to pull apart. Starting with number one, very, very successful holistic nutritionists and health coaches acknowledge that they want a business. <laughs> either a full-time business or a part-time business. This probably seems really weird to be talking about, but I am telling you, it, this the nuanced stuff that we're talking about today makes a huge difference. Nothing is too small here. I see people that are struggling with their businesses and they say things like, well, I'm just gonna see how this goes, or I'm gonna test it out, or I'm gonna see if this works, or sometimes it's a version of, well, I don't really need the money, so um, I'm just going to see how how it works. Or I don't, I just like always prefacing with what well, I don't need this to work, <laughs> but I'm going to see if it will. Statements in that vein. OK, basically what they're saying is I'm kind of sort of trying, but I've already braced myself that it might not work. So I'm giving myself an out. OK, that's a very, very different way to approach a business than I'm figuring out how to make this work. Or I want a part-time business where I bring in an extra 5K a month for my family and I work part-time hours. Or I want a multiple six-figure wellness business and I want to work online and I want to have location freedom. Do you see the difference there? It's subtle, but it is everything. It's I'm dipping my toe in the water or no, I want this. I don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know how I'm going to get there. I'm very unclear about exactly how this is going to look, but I want it and I want to figure it out. OK, the successful practitioners that I work with own the fact that they want a business. They have goals. They have a vision. And like I said, they aren't just dipping their toe in the water to see what it's like. They haven't braced themselves for impact thinking, oh, OK, I just want to make it seem like I maybe don't want this because it'll be less embarrassing when I don't get there, when I fail. You know what I'm talking about. So really, the first trait of a highly successful practitioner is acknowledging that they want a business either full-time or part-time. And just acknowledging that and owning that is going to have such a different flavor 
everything that you do, everything you talk about, every person that you talk to potentially as a referral partner or as a client or just people in your life that are going to send clients your way are going to feel a much different energy from you if you have admitted to yourself that you want this. The way that you talk about your business is going to be so much different and it's going to lead to such better results. So acknowledging that you want a business either full-time or part-time, whatever that looks like for you, just owning it, that you want it and you're figuring out how to make that happen is huge. That is the first trait of a successful holistic nutritionist or health coach. Second trait is to choose to be resourceful and not confused. This means having a figure it out mentality. (laughs) Inside the Profitable Nutritionist Program, it is specifically designed to introduce you to what's possible which is super cool (laughs) because in our industry, and again, I gave you examples of lots of different types of practitioners and coaches that I work with and lots of different modalities. There's also so many different business models. Some people work in person in a brick and mortar. Some people work exclusively online. Some people have a hybrid practice. Some people do lab testing. Other people don't do anything like that. There's groups and programs and one-on-ones and memberships. I mean, there's just the opportunities and the possibilities are endless. Okay. It's not a one size fits all. So in the program, we have a system for this. We have a process for figuring out what do you want your business to look like? This is giving you permission to just trust yourself that you already know the answers and then adopting a figure it out mentality to work backwards and put all of those pieces together. And to do that, you have to choose to be resourceful, not confused. (laughs) Being resourceful is crucial. And this is a trait of someone that's going to be successful. I see it all the time, adopting this figure it out mentality. I know this is true because my most successful students in the program and also in the mastermind take a concept that they're introduced to in the program and they run with it. They come back then with a story of what they decided, why it was best for them, how they took action on making it happen, how they evaluated the results and tweaked and how they knew what to do next. They'll come for coaching when they get stuck. But that's the format that I teach is coming at it with a, I'm going to figure this out mentality. That is what I mean by being resourceful, not being confused. Now, the being confused version is spinning in indecision, being always Uh, kind of making a decision, but not really making the decision, second guessing the decision, kind of executing, but not really. That's confusing. Then thinking, no, I maybe made the bad choice or the wrong choice. I got to go back, make a decision again. That is confusion. Confusion is paralysis. (laughs) Okay. Successful business owners choose not to be confused. They choose when they find themselves in a confusion spiral, they choose to get out of it as quickly as possible by taking action. Now, some people come into the Profitable Nutritionist program with so many resources like we have in there, and they feel like they won the lottery. They're like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. I have no idea how I'm going to use all of these resources, literally everything that I need for the next stage, the next stage, the next stage is all here. I know the answers are here. I'm so supported. It's great. I'm going to figure it out. Others come in and think, this is confusing. I have no idea where everything is. I'm not good at technology. Maybe this isn't for me. That's completely optional thinking. So this is just another way that I see it show up. I'm going to call it out here. Having the thought, I'm resourceful, I'm going to figure it out, is going to be such a better experience for you as a business owner (laughs) and just as a human than, oh my gosh, I'm so confused. I'm shutting down. I'm not good at this. I'm not as good as everybody else. That's totally optional. That's confused thinking. So choose not to be confused. Truly a trait of successful business owners. Even though we all can find ourselves in confusion from one time to another, it's how quickly you get out of it and choose not to be confused anymore. Choose to figure it out. Choose to be supported. Choose everything is here for me. Choose to be part of the group. Choose to be bad at technology. (laughs) In this example, choose to be bad at it. And it's not a problem. I'm gonna figure it out. Another way to say this is building your self-confidence not your confidence. And I've done entire podcast episodes on this. There's something that we talk about a lot, but the difference between confidence and self-confidence is this. Confidence is based on past experience or evidence that your brain already has. So if you're relying on feeling confident about something, it's because you've already done it. Self-confidence, on the other hand, is based on knowing you're the kind of person who figures it out without having evidence at all. (laughs) You have no supporting evidence that you know how to do this or you'll figure out how to do this thing other than knowing I'm the kind of person who does figure it out. Okay. That's self-confidence. 
I've also told this story many times, but I'm going to bring it up again because it is really pertinent here that I see this pivotal moment in my own life when I borrowed someone else's confidence about me and adopted it as self-confidence for myself when I heard my dad talk about me. And he was explaining how he had run into someone that hadn't seen him for a long time. And this person was asking how my brother and I were both doing. This is when I was in college. So he said he, he told me how he had updated this person on how my brother was doing. And then I said, oh, great. And he's like, yeah. And then he asked about you. And I said, oh, Andrea, we don't worry about her. She always lands on her feet. He just said it so matter of factly, and it was so, it's just like so pivotal to me. I can just remember exactly where I was. I can remember the whole scenario. We were talking on the phone when that happened. And I thought, is that true? Am I the kind of person that always lands on their feet? And my brain did a little like <laughs> short circuit. And I thought, okay, is that true? That must be true. I don't know. Someone else thought, said that was true. Okay, carry the one, recalculate. Do, do, do. All right, maybe I guess I'm the kind of person that always lands on their feet. Great. And I feel in my life that something really shifted there. I probably was already the kind of person that had a figure it out mentality. I probably was already the kind of person that innately operated in that way, but it really took it to the next level for me to borrow someone else's confidence in me and to operate from that self-confidence of, okay, I'm that kind of person. That was a trait that I decided I had. Just interesting, right? It's it's interesting to think of how quickly we can decide that we have a trait or we are the kind of person that fill in the blank and we can just grab evidence that that is true. We don't need years and years of data behind any of these things. So I want to just say, I don't know, felt compelled as I'm going through this list to tell you if there is any of these traits that you think, I'm, I'm just really not there. I don't know. Just know that it's a very, very quick shift to get to that point, to decide, okay, I am the kind of person that does blank now. This just, just this, this just in right now. <laughs> I am this kind of person starting right this second. Okay. With over 100 episodes of the Profitable Nutritionist podcast at this point, my team asked if we could create a podcast roadmap, quick guide to the most popular episodes, which I thought was a fabulous idea. <laughs> They're so smart. We ended up categorizing 30-ish of the top episodes into a few different lists and categories so you can easily find the most useful content for exactly where you're at in your business right now. To get the podcast roadmap download, just go to theprofitablenutritionist.com slash roadmap one word. You're more than welcome to binge all of the episodes, of course, but if you'd like the shortcut guide, this roadmap is going to be gold for navigating to the exact episodes that you need right now. Again, download the PDF at theprofitablenutritionist.com slash roadmap. Number three of the five traits that I see highly successful wellness business owners embody is that they prioritize massive action over passive action. What does that mean? Well, I've kind of teed it up already when I said that clarity on anything in your business comes from action. And I would amend that to say clarity for anything that we're doing in our life, not just our business, comes from action. You can't steer a parked car. <laughs> you have to do something to know what the clear next step is going to be. And that's what I mean by massive action. Okay. Massive action produces a result. So that could be making sales in your business. That could be writing marketing copy. That could be sending emails, one-off emails, email broadcasts. That could be creating assets for your clients, something in your process that's going to make it better for them. That's going to get them better results. So they're sending more referrals your way. That's going to make things more efficient in your business. All of those are massive actions that produce a result, a result that's going to make you more money and free up more time for you. Massive action. From a business standpoint, that's what I want you to be thinking. Now, passive action doesn't produce anything, okay? Passive action feels really good. <laughs> we can tell ourselves it's productive, but we know it actually isn't. That's learning, scrolling social media, researching. I'm doing the world's biggest air quotes when I say researching over here. Watching course videos, listening to podcasts like this. Though I do think it's valuable for you, it's not producing anything for you to be listening to this podcast, okay? This is passive action. Reading books, um, basically anything that's getting ready to get ready. That is passive action. So the difference is you're never going to have anything to evaluate, no data coming in, nothing to tweak and make better in your business if you don't do massive action. If you don't take the massive action and do the things messy in the beginning, you're not going to have anything to evaluate and make better. 
you can't learn how to drive by watching videos alone. <laughs> you have to get in the car and you have to rrr, steer, brake, herky jerky, hit some cones in the parking lot so that you know what to do differently in the future. Same thing in your business, all right? You have to take massive action. It feels uncomfortable, but the people that are successful in their businesses do it anyway. They get quickly out of the mode of thinking that passive action is all that they can do or all they need to do. And they realize, nope, we got to produce some results here. We got to do some things that are a little scary. Put us out there. We have to do those so we can see which of them works and which don't, and then get better at the ones that do. Double down on what's working, tweak it, repeat it. That's business right there, my friend, right? And I just want to say again, this is all baked into the repeatable revenue process that I teach in the Profitable Nutritionist Program. You're going to know exactly what to do at every stage. You're going to know exactly what imperfect action to take, what decisions you need to make, how to evaluate it. All of that is baked into the process, but I'm telling you the people I see that are the most successful in the process are the ones that prioritize doing the massive action over the passive action. That doesn't mean that they don't watch videos. It doesn't mean that they don't learn. It doesn't mean that they don't get extra certifications or do research and do those fun things that we love to do. It just means that they do the massive action first. Okay. There's a process for that. I know you're probably getting sick of me saying, but I just want you to know there is a process for teaching your brain how to do this right? I just want to tell you that when you find all of the resources in the Profitable Nutritionist Program, and if you aren't in the program, you need to be in the program, you're going to be so thankful because everything you need is already there. And we have a way for you to navigate all of these decisions and all of the uncomfortable mental drama that comes up along the way. But knowing that you're going to be prioritizing, taking action over consuming is very, very important to know. So that is number three for sure. Prioritize massive action over passive action. Number four in the five traits that I see time and time again is a trait of highly successful practitioners so that they have a growth-oriented personality, meaning they love self-improvement. And I think that that really is innate in anybody that gets into the field that we are in is they love self-improvement for themselves. So obviously they want to help facilitate that for other people. I don't think that there are a lot of health and wellness practitioners that don't kind of just have that already a growth oriented personality, but a lot of them don't see that they have it in business. So I want to just offer that having a love for self-improvement and a curiosity of how to do better, live better, feel better in any area of your life translates very, very easily to how to have a growth-oriented view on your business, all right? This person, the successful person that embodies this, and I bet this is you, sees their business and their health and living a full life as a journey, and they appreciate the infinite perspective of it versus a finite perspective thinking, once we cross the goal line, we can just check the box and we're done. <laughs> we know that we're never done. In our health, we're never just healthy. We could always be healthier. We could always do a little bit better. We could always learn more about our aging body and how to support it more. It's never done, right? We never just stop learning or stop trying. No, of course not. It's infinite perspective versus a finite perspective, <sighs> which takes off so much pressure, <laughs> Because you're on your own timeline. You're in it for the journey, not the destination. You're not trying to beat anyone else or do it faster or better. So the question to always ask yourself is, where is my growth here? This is what I want to ask you for your business. Because the same parallel, like I said, for a health journey applies to business. We never get to a point where we're like, okay, business is done. We did it. <laughs> we did our business. No, we can always make it more efficient. We can always make it better. We can always make more money. We can always get more impact or get more impact. <laughs> it's not coming very easily for me today, as you can tell, to articulate my thoughts. We never get to a point, what I'm trying to say is where we've made enough impact. Hey, it's an infinite timeline. It's an infinite game that we're playing, not finite. Just like your health, just like probably all things in our lives that are worthwhile, we can always do a little bit better. We can always learn a little bit more. And somebody that is successful in a health and wellness practice 
as their own boss, as the entrepreneur, as the owner of the company has to have that growth oriented personality and just love self-improvement and love the idea of making it better, not trying to get to the goal line where it's done. (laughs) It's just never done. It's a lie to tell your brain that it's going to be done because it's not. You're always going to want to do a little bit more, make it a little better, make it more efficient, learn some new things, get better results for your clients, implement a new process, take another certification. I mean, always all of the things. So, like I said, the question to ask yourself is, where is my growth here? If you are like me and have a personality like I do, you tend to go fast. You want to try all of the things. You want to hustle. Your brain does on some level believe that there is a goal line you're trying to get to. (laughs) And like I just said, there isn't. There actually isn't. We're going to keep going forever. We're going to always be learning more, doing better, and enjoying the journey is really the growth for someone like me. So the growth there is to slow down, to simplify, to be uncomfortable with doing less things, but doing them better. (laughs) It's so painful. It's so painful, but that is the growth. If you have a personality like mine, that is the growth. I am in it. I know it. I understand it because I live it every day, every week. Totally understand. So the growth is to slow down, just do less, do it better, simplify all of the things. Now, When you have the opposite personality, it's going to be different. It's going to be take the imperfect action. If you're not great at doing all of the things, taking all of the actions, the growth is going to be to speed up, okay? To lean into where you already are a growth-oriented person, whether that's in your health or somewhere else, and apply it to your business, okay? So it's taking that personality type where you can see evidence somewhere else where you already are that way, and then moving that evidence over to your business and applying the same principles, getting out of your own way, taking more action, making it imperfect and doing more. So know thyself, really, where is the growth? Is it in throwing a little bit more spaghetti at the wall at a faster speed? (laughs) Or is it slowing down and enjoying the journey? I mean, really, either one is going to get you to the place where you have a business that you love that doesn't burn you out, but you have to know yourself. Now, for me, I have to remember on a daily basis that slow is smooth and smooth is fast. (laughs) I think that's a Navy SEAL. um, If I'm not mistaken, that's a Navy SEAL mantra, but it makes a lot of sense to me. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Okay. Okay. It is an infinite journey. It's not finite. And knowing that and appreciating that is huge. So don't expect everything in your business to be linear and predictable. Don't freak out when it isn't. Be along for the journey, not just the destination. That is number four. And that is coaching I give to myself (laughs) as much as to my students. All right. Number five, the last trait of a highly successful wellness practitioner is they are coachable and curious and willing to evaluate. Another way to say that is they are willing to face the failures head on and figure it out. Kind of blending all of these things together, these traits that we've already talked about, but I want to be really clear on what this looks like in your practice and in your business. It means not making every failure a problem because it's really, really not. You can't avoid failing. You can't avoid trying things in your business and having them not work. You can't avoid having uncomfortable conversations with potential clients or current clients, having them not go the way that you want to. It's going to happen. You're going to try things that aren't going to get the results that you wanted. So just plan for that. Expect it. It's not a problem. My clients say this often. They say, if we had t-shirts for the TPN program, they would just say, it's not a problem. (laughs) Because that is so often the conclusion and the coaching that comes from so many different experiences that people have in the program is they get to the point where they realize, okay, it's not a problem. I tried this thing. It didn't work the way I wanted to. It's not a problem. That's going to happen. So love it when it happens. Because when you have these fails in your business, big or small, it means that you're doing the massive actions. Because the passive actions don't produce any failures. (laughs) It's very safe. That's why our brain loves it. Our brain loves to learn more. It loves to research more, loves to take more certifications because that's very, very safe territory where there's no possibility that you're going to fail or have any emotions of rejection or inadequacy or any confusion or anything like that. No, of course our brains love that. That's what we want to do. But when you're out there, you're putting yourself in the ring and taking the massive action, you're going to fail. Either you're winning or you're learning. And if you're learning, it's still not a problem because then you have something to evaluate to do better next time. So just remember, you can't do it wrong. 
I know my most successful students and the practitioners that I see that have multiple six figure onto seven figure businesses are really, really good at being coachable, being curious and being willing to evaluate their failures and learn from them, not hide from them, not pretend that they didn't happen. They're like, nope. Okay. Let's roll up our sleeves. Let's figure out why did that happen? And then how do we not do it next time? (laughs) That's what you have to do. And that's really what business is, is repeatedly trying things and then evaluating if they worked or not and trying them and evaluating what worked and what didn't. I will say that having a process or some sort of a roadmap to follow for creating your ideal business structure, which is the kind of business that you want. Is that in person? Is that online? What are you with groups? Are you doing one-on-ones? Which is all of the things that we already talked about that are all of the different business types as health and wellness practitioners that we can have. Figuring out what is the best for you, what you want, and then having a roadmap to follow to create that is going to make a lot less trial and error for you. So I do want to say that there is a strategy for what to try and when to try it, but my most successful students and the most successful people I see in the industry are willing to fail anyway. They're willing to follow a process, try the things, and maybe not have it go exactly the way that they want it to, but not make it a problem. Keep showing up, keep evaluating, keep tweaking, and do more of what's working so that they can grow that business that they want. So that is number five. Be coachable and curious and willing to evaluate, not just staying hidden and not having any failures or thinking something is wrong when you have the failures. You have to plan for them. They're going to happen. (laughs) Expect it all the time. As an entrepreneur, you're going to have failures, but that's okay because either you're winning or you're learning. It's not a problem when you're learning. Your clients need you to learn that lesson and to have this trait so that you can coach them the same way. So you can expect them to not make it a problem when they have failures, when they plateau, when they go backwards instead of forwards, when they try something and it doesn't work the way that they thought it was going to. You have to go first and know in your business that that's okay. And that doesn't mean that you're not going to get the outcome eventually so that you can then show them it's okay. (laughs) It's okay if we tried something and it doesn't work because you are getting coached, you have a process, you have support, and we're going to figure out what is going to work. It's not a problem. Okay. So be coachable, stay curious and evaluate when in doubt evaluate, evaluate. All right. I love recording this episode. I mean, this was just really fun to dive into the five traits. It's not about skills. It's not about knowing how to market and it's not about knowing how to sell. And it's not about having all the answers. Really. It's about who the successful health and wellness practitioner is and how they show up day after day, after day, month after month, year after year in their business. Okay. It's not about the skills because anybody can learn the skills. It's about having the mindset and the mentality of success and of being coachable, of figuring out how am I going to apply these skills even when it doesn't feel like it's second nature yet. Really, it's how you show up in your business and do the things imperfectly that's going to determine if you're successful or you're not successful. And if you need to learn some of the skills, you come into the Profitable Nutritionist Program, I will teach you the skills. If you are scaling to multiple six figures and beyond, you come into the mastermind. You learn different skills, more advanced skills, but it's the same personality traits, no matter what level of business that you're at, that is going to determine if you are successful or not. I'm going to recap what they are. Number one, acknowledge that you actually want a business. Own it. Be serious about it. Admit it to yourself. And best yet, admit it to others in your life. Acknowledge that you actually want it. Don't have the toe dipped in the water. Just like, ah, I don't know. No, acknowledge that you want it. That's going to get you way further than anything else in the beginning. Number two, be resourceful, not confused. Being confused is a choice. It's a much better choice to decide that you're going to figure it out instead. (laughs) Just decide that you're the kind of person that figures things out and decide that you're the kind of person that doesn't stay confused. Amazing. Do that. (laughs) Number three, prioritize massive action over passive action. Number four, have a growth-oriented personality. You love self-improvement. I know that you do. If you're doing this work and you're listening to this podcast, you love self-improvement. It interests you. It's just part of the curiosity that is you. So take that, if you haven't already, and apply it to your business as well. Have a growth-oriented, curious personality for business improvement, just like you do in other areas of your life. And then number five, be coachable and curious and willing to evaluate. Meaning, be willing to face the failures head-on. They're going to be there. It's not a problem. I hear 
all the time for my students in the TPN program when they come in and they tapped into the tried and true repeatable revenue process and all of the specific business building resources that we have in the program, that they're so thankful because everything that they need is already there to learn the skills. But also there's a process for adopting these five personality traits so that it becomes second nature, so that they can take what's already there, take those seeds and really, really grow them over time. All you need to do is show up with a willingness to be coached and coach yourself through making the decisions, taking the imperfect action, and honestly evaluating and getting coached along the way. Doors are open right now for the Profitable Nutritionist program, but only until Wednesday, March 6th at midnight. So again, if you're listening to this on the day it's released, it's go time. Go to theprofitablenutritionist.com slash join and get yourself in there. Enrollment only opens a few times each year, and this is one of those times. And then again, if you're listening in the future, go to that same page and get the dates of the next enrollment, put them in your calendar and join the wait list so you don't miss out. Again, that is theprofitablenutritionist.com slash join. My friend, I look forward to meeting you inside the program, to hearing all about your business and cheering on your success. I know that if you are adopting these five traits, you are going to kill it. And we have the best business in the entire world. We get to help people transform their lives and transform ours and have our dream lifestyle while we're doing it. It is the best win-win ever. I can't wait for you to share all of the wins in the program so I can see them too. All right. Have a wonderful, wonderful week, my friend, and I'll be back here next week. Same time, same place. Just a second. Have you taken the Profitable Practice Philosophies free course yet? That's PPP for short, by the way. (laughs) What are you waiting for? The free course is a 10-part, highly actionable roadmap for making more money in your holistic nutrition practice, even if you're starting from scratch. You'll get one task to do each day delivered straight to your inbox as soon as you sign up at theprofitablenutritionist.com slash free. Again, sign up for the Profitable Practice Philosophies free course, the PPP, as the case may be, at theprofitablenutritionist.com slash free.